Hi, in this video I'll show you a turntable that I designed and built for myself. After I printed it, I decided to make it a small project to share it with everybody in the internet. So everyone is free to download STL files using the links provided in the description below. The downloadable zip files include STL files, photos, and other info. Also, please leave your comments and suggestions after you watch the video and build your new turntable. Later I am going to make some mods to it, such as, automatic control, remote control, etc. All modular, with affordable components, and as simple as possible. I initially designed it for UV curing, but was suggested that it can be used for photogrammetry and 3D scanning. So, there we go. This would be photogrammetry and 3D scanning. And this would be UV curing. And yes, I have to give it a couple of paint coats to protect the parts from deadly UV rays. Okay, here is the monster. With my current control arrangement it can rotate its head in both directions. The simplest solution to this is a double pole double throw switch. If you don't know what it is, just google for DPDT switch. Or just use a simple on off switch for one direction. To convert the monster into a turntable we need to mount a table on its head. For this a CD or DVD disc. It can be glued onto the head. And I am sure you know where this one comes from. Now, let's see how big this little machine is. It has 150 millimeters across tips of its legs. It is 45 millimeters high. Its body diameter is 30 millimeters. And the raised portion of its head is 15 millimeters in diameter to match the DVD or CD disc central hole. Here are the printable parts of our UV curing, photogrammetry, and 3D scanning table. All of them were designed to save resin, ensure successful printing and easy assembly. I washed the parts in ethanol, placed them in a plastic bag and into a freezer for 5 minutes and then removed them by hand. This is the heart of the monster that we have to put into its body before we make it live. This will be a tight fit, so we can add just a tiny bit of grease. So the operation was successful and we can now take care of the head. This is also a tight fit, but do not grease this one. Gently push it on until you get your satisfaction. But do not push too far, just to make the shaft end flat with the head surface. And God said, let us attach legs to the body and the legs were attached to the body, one by one, step by step.
But one of the legs did not want to obey. And God gave it hard time. And it obeyed. And God blessed them. And said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply. Okay, here, there is a small gap just in case you want to make the legs and the body inseparable for some reason. Just put a droplet of resin here and cure with a UV flashlight. This is not elephant foot. The flange is to provide strength against bending and a larger area of contact with desktop. This groove is to save a couple of resin drops and provide rigidity as well. These holes were made to reduce suction. All these serve to reduce FEP contact area and, therefore the pulling force. These are vertical supports. Now let's talk about STLs which come with the downloadable file packs. As I mentioned earlier, did I, you can print two types of heads, one with raised portion for a CD disc, and the other just flat for a disc without central hole. So this one has a raised central portion, 14.95 millimeters in diameter. At its bottom, there are suction channels, which also reduce the contact area. The central hole has a flat to match one on the shaft. Here is the bottom anti-suction and anti-elephant foot arrangement. All the holes in the head, except the central one air to save resin and reduction FEP contact area. The width of elephant foot compensation is 0.3 mm and should be ok for all resins with standard curing times. Here is the flat version of the head. The only difference is that it has no raised portion, and should not be used with CD or DVD discs. This is the body with central slot for the geared motor. And four slots for the legs. These are to save resin but may become slots as well. These are to reduce FEP contact area. Our lovely suction channels to feed air to the motor slot. The elephant foot compensation is 0.35 mm deep, so this is why having at least 7 base layers at 0.05 mm layer thickness is important. And the last but not least STL. The leg. The guiding grooves. Angled wall. It has no elephant foot compensation as we don't want to reduce the base layer to build plate contact area in this case. Here is the flange. Holes. And hole supports I mentioned earlier. This is how the suction channels and holes work, reducing the pulling forces.
you may notice that surface area of each consecutive layer is less than that of the previous layer. So the pulling forces are reduced with each new layer. Now, the settings. I used Nova 3D resin so you might consider some adjustments for your resin type. So as I said, elephant foot compensation depth is for 7 layers at 0.05 mm. Exposure time is not related to elephant foot, while the bottom exposure time is. Set these based on your experience, printer brand, resin type, etc. Now slicing, to check the weight, printing time, and finally save the printable file. Thanks for watching. 